Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, I'm going to be attempting to make a hydrogen bubbler right there, or basically, it's a thermal cleansing system that turns polluted oxygen into clean oxygen. Now, this is all based on of a couple of comments you guys were talking about in my last episode when I used the poop puff fling to make a fully sustainable base off of just, you know, polluted oxygen. You guys were saying, hey, you know what, you can probably convert that right here. So David was talking about that. Uh, Ronnie was also talking about that. And Coda the Fox was also talking about it. Pointing me over to a post that was made by Bio Wolfie here, who has a very, very complex setup for basically cooling down or super cooling hydrogen to the point where it's below the temperature of which oxygen then turns into liquid oxygen. Boom, Brathgar here from the future, just to let you know what this video is about. This video is about me going through all the different steps, learning the different tricks, learning what does work and what doesn't work of converting essentially polluted oxygen into liquid oxygen and then boiling that oxygen that liquid oxygen back into clean oxygen through the use of really, really cold hydrogen. So there's two different systems that I essentially end up testing right here. One is a uh, like a separate system or a radiator system to where the hydrogen is completely separate from the polluted oxygen. So it runs through some pipes and then that is there's that transfer of energy between the two. So we get really, really cold hydrogen in here that cools down the polluted oxygen, turning it into liquid oxygen, which then boils back into clean oxygen, which you can then pump out, you know, nice and clean. Uh, the other method is kind of a mixed gases setup right here. So what you end up doing is doing the same sort of method where you get your hydrogen really, really cold, um, but you pump it into the same volume as your polluted oxygen and that's where the transfer happens right there. So that's a gas on gas system as compared to more like a gas on on like radiator system right there. So there's a, a you know some different methods that go between the two and there's kind of a reason I end up going on over here to the radiator system and that's my exploration of and that's what this video is about kind of going from here learning some stuff learning some stuff learning some more stuff. I honestly thought this video would take about an hour to record five hours later i'm still working on it all in all i do end up with a working system so this is the adventure of what it took to get there so the key factor here is temperature at what temperature does hydrogen become liquid and that is at, apparently according to the internet negative 250 degrees celsius right there so we'll probably see that somewhere pretty close to that inside of the game right here uh the oxygen also turns into liquid at negative 183 degrees celsius according to the internet again. We're gonna try this out, see if it's possible, but that's the key factor right there. If you use hydrogen, hydrogen can then get colder than oxygen and still maintain its gas ability so it won't break your machines, right? That's the idea. So if we take a look at the gas setup here, let me show what I what I got going on here. I have a gas pump that's pumping into two thermoregulators, which is getting nice and cold right there. I have a filter, which I don't think I'm gonna use. I'm gonna get rid of that at some point here. I'm gonna simplify the system quite a bit. The key here is to come up with a very, very simple system that will convert, you know, polluted oxygen into clean oxygen through the process of liquefying, or liquefaction, right? <laughs> so this is kind of a complicated setup. Let me go ahead and try to make something a little bit simpler. All right, so this is test number two right here. So this one is gonna be pumping uh, hydrogen into this area right here with the polluted oxygen to create a much more balanced sort of scenario right there. And then it will come up here to this pump right now and then pump back out. So let me show you. Let me just go ahead and turn it on and get it running. So I'm pumping in hydrogen, as you can see. This thermoregulator should turn on if anything is still warmer than that temperature right there. So we'll get some things going. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So I'm not over pressurizing things too much. And essentially what's going on now is that if it's hydrogen, it will come back down here and get cooled again. Otherwise, contaminated oxygen will get filtered out to the left. If it happens to be oxygen, it'll then come on over here and, and vent into this area. All right, so here we are in the more conductive side of things. So we got the gas pipe, the polluted oxygen right there. You can see how the hydrogen or the temperature of the hydrogen is actually quite cold over negative 200 degrees Celsius right there. And the polluted oxygen is hovering negative 182. We should see this pretty soon turn into liquid oxygen. I guess that's the idea. All right, so that's negative one. There we go. There we go. Now it's happening. So now right down here, I've got oxygen, liquid oxygen. 
Awesome. Nice and cold. Still got polluted oxygen above it. But we should see that this is going to get nice and cool. And what I can do is I can actually take this gas valve here and introduce some more polluted oxygen to this area. On this side over here, things are starting to catch up a little bit. Looks like we got 145 or so degrees Celsius there. Not too bad. All right, looks like all I have in here now is just nice, good, clean oxygen. You can see how it's just dripping down there. Hey, there we go. Now I got liquid oxygen down here. Nice. All right, so that's working. So now if I take a look at gas, what I should see is some oxygen sometime coming over here. Or maybe not. Maybe it all just freezes up. Oh, there we go. Needs a little tweaking. But I'm on to something. Come on, show me that oxygen. I probably won't get a lot right off the bat. There it is. There's a little oxygen. How much is that? Ooh, 28.9 grams. Watch out. Here we come. Look at all this liquid down here. Oh, there's, there's some more. What do we got there? Ooh, that's 508 grams of oxygen. So it's coming in in at least pretty decent quantity right there. I mean, as far as like inside the pipe. That's a maximum, you know, pull for a, a gas pump. There's something to this. I mean, it could be cleaned up, sexied up a little bit. Oh, but look at this. Ooh, look at all this oxygen. What do we got there? Okay, not a lot, not a lot, not a lot. But it's oxygen. It looked like a lot. All right, cool. I learned some stuff here. You know, there's definitely some merit to this. I think it could work. Takes a little bit of strategy. Got to figure out how I'm going to get that polluted oxygen in there and how it's going to self-regulate so that it, you know, doesn't cause an overpressurizing po uh, problem right there. Looks like you can make it definitely cold enough. I have a lot of liquid oxygen down there. I mean, look at that. That's about 30 kilograms of just liquid oxygen just waiting to go. Probably going to want to move that down there. I'm going to come back to this tomorrow. I'm going to make a really sweet system. It's going to be nice and simple. All right, so yesterday I learned quite a bit about these sort of air scrubbing machines. And today I think I'll be able to make something a little bit better. So this one over here, uh, I like the concept of it. I like how it works. I like the fact that you can pump gas in there and then it just continues to run. And the fact that you can actually set this up so that it runs off at just 240 watts. The problem is that it just seems like it's so easy to get into a situation where whatever the, the hydrogen in here is just super cold to the point where it might actually freeze and then destroy your pipes and pumps and all that stuff before actually converting uh, polluted oxygen into anything else. So I'm not 100% sure that that's really the right method to go. There might be a way to balance that out a little bit more, but I'm not going to pursue that in anymore. This system over here seemed to be much more um, stable in that the hydrogen and polluted oxygen comes in here and then it gets filtered out. Now I was thinking about this method over here and I think there's ways that I can avoid using two gas filters just to reduce the power output a little bit right there. I also want to set it up so I can measure to see just how much uh, clean oxygen I can actually produce in a day. So I got to reset things up so that I can actually get those true measurements because obviously that's what you want. I want to figure it out. What, what can you do? Can you do 400 kilograms a day? Because if so, that'd be pretty awesome. All right, so welcome to the Hydrogen Bubbler 3.0. Let me show you its features here. What I got is some polluted oxygen over here on the left, pretty normal. Same sort of setup. I got the two vents at the top. The idea is that the contaminated oxygen will come in on the left vent here, and the hydrogen, cool hydrogen, will come in on the right. So if we take a look at the gas plumbing, plumbing here, uh, this is where that sort of polluted oxygen is going to come in right here, or it will be recirculated back this way in order to happen. The pump is down here on the bottom, so if we get any clean oxygen, that should find its way out into, well, basically your base. This is just going to be kind of an open space right there, so I can measure that. That's 10 tiles large. Uh, so up here, I have a total of 10 kilograms of hydrogen that I'll be using in this system. I'll just got to pump it in, and then that, that'll be useless at that point. So uh, the other thing is I've set up over here is that over, the first thing this filter is going to filter out is hydrogen. I'm thinking that the most of the time what I want to move through here is going to be hydrogen and then that will go through three thermoregulators because I think that's going to accelerate things a little bit right there. The idea is that if I go through, if I filter out hydrogen first, I may not be able to have to run this second filter as much 
which will hopefully make this a little bit more efficient. Uh, the second filter is going to be contaminated oxygen, so contaminated oxygen. I'm sorry, polluted oxygen. I keep calling it contaminated. Uh, polluted oxygen will find its way back up here. Um, and if it is oxygen, then it will just pass all the way through over here because there's only the three gases in this system. Thermal switch, like normal, if it's warmer than negative 188 degrees Celsius, then it will be on. The other thing I have right now is I put two normal tiles down here at the bottom. The idea is that if some liquid oxygen is going to go down there and start to build up, it should hopefully be able to transfer energy a little bit quicker than with like an insulated tile. That way it will turn into oxygen, hopefully much quicker. Also put the thermal regulators right below it so that it, those tiles should be a little bit warmer. Most of the cooled air should be right in here. That's the idea. We're going to start this on cycle 58. Okay, so I think I noticed another thing here. A lot of this hydrogen does not want to move down to that pump. I think I'd be better off moving that pump up here so that it grabs a little bit more hydrogen. All right, now I'm getting nice and close. This thermal switch is getting nice and cold. The stuff inside the pipe is really cold. So I should be getting to the point where I, I should, be, should be able to turn this off and actually start introducing some polluted oxygen to this. It's taking about four cycles though just to kind of pre-cool this system. Although I did add an extra 10 kilograms of hydrogen right there. Obviously it's taking a little while though. Here we go, it should turn off. So now this entire area is filling up. And you can see then it's gonna bounce back on and then it'll turn off. So now it's just gonna keep doing this over and over again. All right, cool, let me go ahead and turn that speedy thing off. So let me just start with just a very small amount of polluted oxygen at this point. 15 grams a second. Just very, very little. Now, in theory, it should be cold enough to turn this stuff right into liquid oxygen. Doesn't look like it is just yet. So let me go ahead and just make this a little bit colder. Negative 193. How about that? There we go. See, now I'm getting some nice liquid oxygen out of this. Aha! Just had to make it a little bit cooler. So, we're going to start up this next day. I'm going to run this just at 15 grams a second, just to kind of see what it does. It might be that I want to set up some, like, bypasses for these thermal regulators so that I don't overcool the hydrogen. Like, once I pre-cool it, you might be able to have just a valve that runs to either one or another so that you can control that. So that when, when you're doing this stage right here, you can just kind of run one thermal regulator, reduce the amount of energy requirement you need basically but see now we've got some nice liquid oxygen down there quite a bit of it too what i am afraid though is that what's going to be inside this pipe here as far as hydrogen goes is going to get too cool i'm already running dangerously close at 230 degrees celsius negative 230 all right so we can see that the system's working right now um polluted oxygen is entering over here hydrogen is cycling its way around to cool everything down and to stay cold you can see that this gas that is over here is quite cool already. It's close. It's just about to the point of turning into liquid oxygen. This stuff that's being introduced over here is that very small quantity. As you can see, it's only like 50 grams right there. But you can start to see just how much oxygen is starting to build up in this pipe over here. Quite a bit of it. So this system right now is running between 600 and 720 watts, depending on when this, you know, when this filter is running right there. So that's a pretty, that's, that's a doable number right there. That's less than two duplicates running on a hamster wheel. It's a hydrogen generator, something like that. It, that you can maintain that for sure. <laughs> it seems like hydrogen is consumed in this operation somehow. How is that even possible? Where'd my hydrogen go? Interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Which makes me think that this system down here, well, might actually be a little bit better. Who knew? All right, so I'm going to try to go back to the thermal conductivity sort of strategy right here. So I'm just going to have one loop of hydrogen that's going to constantly be cooling. However, you see over here on the gas pipe, there's specific heat capacity, uh, which is the amount of energy required to raise the substance temperature right there. So that is 0.2 right there, and then thermal conductivity. And that is basically the thermal the indicates the maximum rate at which this substance can conduct heat. So the idea is you want to get those numbers 
uh, higher, essentially, because that's going to then create a better heat sink, and especially with the thermal conductivity. So if we looked at some of the materials right here, uh, you can see the thermal conductivity is 4.5. That's quite a bit higher right there. And I think if we're passing gas pipes behind it, uh, the thermal conductivity actually happens when you kind of stack things on top of each other. Somebody was mentioning something ab about like that in the comment section. So that might actually happen right there. Oh, perfect. We're going to use a shower. The shower cooler. <laughs> Look at the temperature on this shower, man. It's dropping. It's dropping quickly. Sometimes you got to be a little bit creative. That's all, that's all I gotta say. Hmm, I'm not sure why. Trying to recirculate that same sort of radiator just seems to, you know, give this thing a headache, for sure. I don't know why. I don't know why that's happening. I'm probably gonna have to include a gas pump up there, though. Just for the hydrogen. That stinks, but oh well. Alright, there we go. Constant cooling system. You see that the liquid vent and the shower here, they're kind of cold. <laughs> this is a getting this is becoming a weird system now. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this. See if it actually does stay cool. Oh, you know what I can do? Here's what I can do. If I put power right up here, and this goes below a temperature. If it's warmer than, you know, negative 200 degrees Celsius. That way I can protect my hydrogen. Aha! There we go. This might actually work. Alright. Seems like it's working. So far, cycle 75, we'll see just how long it takes to get down to temperature. All right, well, it's been running for a little while now. It seems like the hydrogen system is quite safe where it's at. It's not freezing, not getting any sort of freeze damage this time. It all seems to be working pretty good there. And I've got it queued up to the point where all this gas is, is still in the radiator right here. The only thing I'm waiting for now is waiting for that energy transfer between that, um, essentially the gas to the pipe, to the shower, and to the gas again. You know, that whole thing right there. You can see how the contents in the gas pipe there. Hydrogen is at negative 200 degrees Celsius right there. The gas pipe itself is at negative 150 degrees Celsius. The shower that's on top of it is negative 116. And the polluted oxygen is the exact same number right there. So I'm thinking once that shower gets down there real close to that, you know, tipping point of converting polluted oxygen into liquid oxygen, it should be pretty, hopefully it should be uh, something that's kind of easy to maintain. Because I mean, right now the hydrogen cooling system itself, look, it doesn't really run that much. I mean, I'm running this game at 10x right now and it just barely, you know, turns on every once in a while. So... This might be actually, this might end up being a real stable system. I'm not sure how much it's really going to produce, though. I know one thing is, once you get it up and running, you won't want it to turn off. <laughs> and it might take you a hundred cycles to get there. I don't know. <laughs> Tell you what, I like this system, but I'm going to go ahead and do it without the shower in another spot. So, I'll just build it. I'll build it much bigger. Yeah, we'll, we'll see which one works better. I'm going to add, a, add another option here. This is for, like, just this initial charge. Try to cool it a little bit more. You know, because otherwise it takes a long, long time for this to happen. I already know how much hydrogen is in this system, and I'm not introducing any more. What I want to do is get it down to temperature much, much faster. So that's what I'm going to do here. There's a couple, a couple of these thermoregulators, so now I'm up to three. Yeah, so the stuff that's coming out on the other end is much, much colder. The system over here on the left is just taking its sweet old time. <laughs> it's cold. You know, it doesn't use much energy to kind of stay there. It's just taking its time. This is a little bit more efficient also, because you're not using that gas pump every single time that you want to cool that hydrogen. So you're not introducing it, first off, to the heat that that gas pump makes. And secondly, obviously, you're you're getting more movement out of it. So really, you'd probably want to have a ton of these, but whatever. All right, 12 cycles or so to get the hydrogen down to temperature. It wasn't too terrible. Now let's just see how long it takes the polluted oxygen to get down to a liquid state. 
Over here? <laughs> this thing just keeps getting slower and slower and slower. Ugh. That just isn't working. There we go. Pluted oxygen's getting real close now. Hey, there we go. There we go. Now I'm seeing it. Look at it go! So, uh, 14 cycles in, suddenly I've got loads and loads of liquid oxygen at the moment. It's just it's starting to show up. This is actually working. Hey, and my thermal switch now hit negative 193 or hit it for long enough to actually start producing some oxygen. Yeah, it's working. So I think at this point I want to go ahead and pump that up to 188. It's going to take a little bit for this to balance out, but what we can see here is look at all this oxygen in this area. Look at how much polluted oxygen we have on top. Yeah, there we go. It's raining down. Let me go ahead and get ready to turn this into a vacuum. We'll see just how much this thing produces in a day. I like it, though. Looks like a, a, it's got quite a bit going on. Look at that. Look at that. Like nine kilograms of liquid oxygen down there. Just waiting. All right, so now the real test. First off, let me save this game. So I want to go ahead and let this gas valve open. So that way some contaminated oxygen or sorry, polluted oxygen, and start to force its way in here. We'll see what happens. Look at how cold that is. So pretty soon here, I'm gonna reach the point where this is gonna stabilize, that hydrogen. You can see it's entering the system about negative 218 degrees Celsius, leaving about 214. So the polluted oxygen way down here at the bottom, look at that, negative 185.3. And then its temperature goes up quite a bit as it gets closer to the top. So all the way up here at the top, 128 degrees. So, big difference. You know, I think that idea I had over here of just the normal tile, it seems like that might have been a really good idea. Because I've got a ton of liquid oxygen down here. <laughs> but it's really not, you know, melting. Or shall we say boiling. It's not, it's not boiling and turning into oxygen at the moment. Saw so how much that, look how much oxygen that gave off. It's kilograms worth of it. So I think that's the right move right there. Yeah, see now I'm just getting loads of oxygen out of here. And it's overpressurizing again. Um, so all of this sort of contaminated oxygen here can't enter until I've pumped out all that oxygen. And look at how much of it I got. I've filled up this area over here. My whole system's gonna back up because I don't have enough space to put all the oxygen. All right, seems like this system is starting to normalize out. Now I can give you at least a little bit of a measurement here. I'll be able to square off some tiles, make it a vacuum, and then count it up. All right, so we'll let this area fill up for an entire day right there. Then I'll average those numbers out. We should be able to see just how much oxygen this system right here is producing. How much power is it consuming? It's not telling me because it's past a power switch right now. So it bugs out when that happens. So I have no idea as far as how much power it's really using. Got 120 watts here. You got 240 watts there. This stuff turns on every once in a while. So less than 500 watts, really. Looks like I have 1,440 grams for each tile right there. So let's take that. All right, I have 36 tiles with 1,440 grams per tile. So let me see what I get with that. So that's 51 kilograms of oxygen. And that's about enough to support one duplicate right there. They consume 60 kilograms. So I don't know if it's really worth all the effort, but that system is working. All right, well, there we have it. I was able to make this system over here, which is completely plug and play. I like that. I like the fact that it doesn't take much energy. I mean, all you have to do is sustain this pump and that filter right there, which you can do off of one hamster wheel. The gas pump up here and this thermal regulator, which is the only one it uses, that doesn't take a lot of energy. So it's possible that this whole system right here is running on less than 400 watts. Obviously, I'll have to do some testing to figure out exactly what those energy requirements are. And I think there's some tweaking that I think we can come up to with, you know, kind of a collective. Maybe you guys got some ideas. I'm thinking maybe some more tiles down here. Or maybe I can reposition a thermoregulator. Maybe there's some different materials I can use for the pipes themselves or the pumps themselves to kind of optimize that. You know, I, there's, there's some fun ideas I'm sure that people can come up with to kind of make that work. 
um, a little bit more efficiently and produce more oxygen. So let me know if you got some different ideas down there in the comment section below. As far as systems that work, I think this is the right way forward, I, but I got to work on, on packaging it up a little bit better. And I think that'll be in the next video right there. This guy over here, still not cold enough. So I think the, the shower radiator is a no-go. <laughs> it just it seems to take too long. Oh, well, it was a fun creative idea, but it just didn't work out. At any rate, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this down there in the comment section below. And you know what? If I've earned a subscription, then thank you so much for that. Hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.